Hey everyone, welcome back to Glitz and Glitter. Look what I have today, a chess set. This is gonna be so much fun. I'm gonna put a little twist on it, I think. I'm gonna kinda, I kinda know what I want, but I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I'm probably gonna change things here and there along the way. So you all know I live in Florida and I do a lot of beach things and I'm like, hmm, I've never seen a beach chess set before. How can I incorporate sand and ocean and all that? yet still be able to play chess. But before I start on all that, I just wanna say two things. I hit 15,000 subscribers today. Thank you guys so much. I still don't understand why you all enjoy watching me because I don't know that I would watch me. But thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm just like a drop in the bucket compared to all those big ones out there. And um, 15,000 really, really means a lot to me. I never thought I would hit the first 1,000, let alone 15. So I have been at it for almost one year. My one year anniversary is coming up next week, the beginning of February. So I managed to get to 15,000 in my first year, but that's because of you guys. So thank you so much for watching and in commenting and liking and sharing and all the things that you guys do to help my channel grow. So from the bottom of my heart, just I just want to say thank you. And I do want to give one more shout out today to Renee Brandenburg. She is a viewer who I think has seen almost every video. I'm not sure, but she happens to live about an hour south from me and she wanted the succulent pot that I made the other day, which was so adorable. So she contacted me and asked if she could pick it up and I'm like, sure. So she came up today. I got to meet one of my viewers in person finally. We had a great time. We got to spend a couple hours together and just chit chat and talk about resin and all kinds of things. So Renee, thanks for hanging out with me today. It was super fun. Maybe you can come up one day and we can do a video together. Let me know if you want to do that. Okay. So now that I got that done, I did not want to forget to say those two things. Back to the chessboard. So what I think I'm going to do is take my local sand, which is nice and white until it hits resin and then it gets a little darker, but that's okay. I think I'm going to do sand in every other square. And then my plan, I think I'm going to get these lines white with an acrylic paint pen marker. I'm not sure what you call them, but somebody turned me on to those. So I had to have them and I have them now. I hope I have a white, you know, I didn't even look. So I hope I have a white one. So I think I will get the lines white to bring the white in because I really can't do waves on this. And then once all the sand is cured, I think what I'm going to do is kind of graduate the water behind it from clear to light blue to medium blue to dark blue. So it'll just kind of graduate across the board. That way, that would be like the ocean. I don't know. I think, I don't know. Let's see what it looks like. And then the pieces, I got this whole set from Let's Resin. And it came with the chess pieces and it also came with checkers pieces. So I'll make both of them. So if one of you wants this as a demo, you will have both checkers and chess. And like I said, demos are at cost. There is no profit involved at all. So these little pieces are going to have to be done twice. I will probably do them the first time on video and the second time not because it's basically the same thing. But I'm thinking of filling them with something and then leaving this bottom portion, I don't know if you could see it, this bottom portion here and fill it with the matching sand as the base, just to give it a little bit of a weighty feel instead of a whole resin feel. Um, I'm not sure what I wanna fill the rest with yet. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about like my glitter flakes, the fragments that are super duper light and clear resin, maybe blue on one set and gold on another set. That's what I'm thinking. But as this is going to progress, it'll probably change. So I did measure this all with water before I started. These I cannot do till tomorrow because they are still drying out. And Or I can stick them in like a, my curing machine, get them nice and warm and get them dried out that way. But I highly doubt I'm going to get to those today. So... What I'm going to do is start out with the sand, get that cured, and 
figure out what I'm going to do with these pieces. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, what I was saying was I did measure it with water. This little piece holds two ounces of resin. These pieces hold four ounces for the whole set. And this actually holds a lot more than I ever thought. It actually holds 23 ounces of domed resin. I was shocked. I guessed 16. Um, I was way wrong. So 24 ounces is going in here. So let me get some sand mixed up and then we will start this big project. So you guys were supposed to remind me that I have to do the marker first. Now that I have my resin mixed up, I'm going to be in a rush to get this done. So I'm just going to go through. I had a white one. These are acrylic markers. I will link everything below like I always do. So if you're looking for anything that I'm using, please check the description box. If you still can't find it, give me a comment and I'll, I'll get it fixed and I'll also send you the link. So I'm just going to go quickly through here. I did I, I mixed up three ounces of resin because I'm going to be adding sand. I don't know how much I'm going to need. I did split it between three cups just to give me a little more working time while I'm doing this because I completely forgot. I'm sure you can do this after the fact, but it would just be easier prior to so it gets right into the resin, gets embedded in the resin. So I will speed this process up for you because... Even though I'm rushing, I'm sure you don't want to watch this entire thing. Alright, now that that's done, I am going to go ahead and mix up some of my sand into my resin. I've got a little dotting tool, the thinnest one I could find, so I can get it into all the corners. And since I already have it split up between cups, I have three cups here. I'm just going to leave it that way because I need a lot of working time to do this. So, let me just... hmm. I need a bigger spoon than I have, but I don't have one in here. Let me grab another cup so I can dump some sand in. I want it nice and thick. Something in my sand. So I want the sand nice and thick. I don't want it swimming in resin. That looks good. Good on the first try. All right, let me get these out of the way. Those will be tomorrow. So I'm guessing we don't need very much. Just gonna kind of put it in, get an idea how much I'm gonna need. This is what's going to take a while. So again, I will put you on fast speed, but take a dotting tool if you've never done these before. I've only done one other one a while back, but I ruined my mold, so I had to get a new mold. Do not torch on this mold, I could tell you right now. That's what I did to my other one. I was torching it, and it is so thin I fused my board to it. So basically, and then after a little while, if it pulls away and leaves you an empty spot, then refill it. So that was about good. So just like a little spoonful. And I think if I don't get all those spots cleaned, I'll just peel them off tomorrow when they're, when they're cured. That'll probably be a little bit easier than trying to wipe it around this wet paint. Yeah. All right, that's not too bad. So it's about one good scoop. All right, now I'll put you on the time lapse. Well, 
Well, that was fun. <laughs> actually, it was not bad. I don't mind detail work. I actually decorate sugar cookies just like that with a tiny little needle tip, one cookie at a time. In fact, I'll throw on some cookie pictures right after this segment so you can see how I do cookies. Not actually make them, but you can see what they look like when I'm actually making cookies with a little tiny pen like this. Um, it took two ounces of resin plus the sand. So that's how much I used to fill in this part of the square, half of the square. So I used the other ounce that I mixed up. It was getting really hot by the time I put some color in the other one. I'll show you my freebies. I made a whole bunch of pendants, a couple earrings sets from the, the last ounce. I threw some really pretty um, blue in there so I can make some pendants for you guys. So you'll get to see bonus unmoldings and bonus pendants and things like that. So check out the pictures. I will show you a couple right now. And then as soon as this is cured, I will get back to it, figure out how I'm gonna do my blues. I did spray with alcohol, even though it really isn't gonna matter. I'm just popping some bubbles. But um, that's it for now. I'm going to get a little micro brush. I'm just going to clean up a little bit of this resin with some alcohol. Now I took it off the heat mat only because my heat mat has been well used. And there's one little lip on there, a little bubbled area. So this side would not be flat on it. So I'm not going to be able to use my heat mat on this one. Otherwise I would have. I would love to have this uh, done today, but that's not going to happen. Plus it's probably 830 at night, so it doesn't matter anyway. All right, I'm done rambling on. Enjoy the pictures and be right back. All right, so this is cured enough. I could still bend it, it's still bendy. It's like 11.30, so it's been 8.30, 9.30, 10.30, three hours. And <laughs> I guess it's just the, uh, the time of evening, but I thought I had this brilliant idea. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to do that till tomorrow. I'm gonna go do it right now. So I mixed up six ounces of resin to do this brilliant idea that is not gonna work. So now I have six ounces of resin mixed up and I don't know what to do with it. So I'm like, oh no, it's not gonna work. What I was gonna do is pour one wave here and blow it out and get all my cells, let it cure overnight and blow another wave tomorrow down here, not realizing this is the back of the board you're not gonna see the waves on the front of the board. So after I mixed up my resin, that's when I realized you're not gonna see those waves. So it wasn't such a brilliant idea. Then I decided I'm going to take some of my mermaid tail, which is a blue green, really beautiful fine glitter. I'm gonna pipe it around the edge just to give it a little bit of bling. And I'm sure that probably is only gonna take like 
maybe two ounces. So I got me out of turtle mold. <laughs> Because I don't want to waste the resin. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I was like, I was so excited. I was so brilliant. And I was so stupid. So, yeah. Um, let me get some. <laughs> let me get some of this mixed in here. And uh, see if I could pipe this in. I guess that goes to show you, you shouldn't be thinking this late at night about things like this. So this one is a fine glitter. And I actually, I'm using my tabletop epoxy for this because of my brilliant idea. So this isn't even my casting resin, which is fine. This is just a little bit thicker, which is fine. Um, and it will set up faster. So this is, yeah, the tabletop epoxy because it wasn't supposed to be for this it was supposed to be for waves. Let me just put a little more glitter in there. I think I'm gonna drip one drip of glue just so it's not so runny on me to pipe it in there. It might be a little bit more controllable if I throw a little bit of Elmer's glue in there. Plus it'll, if it doesn't suspend in the glitter, it will now, or in the resin, it will now. I don't know why I can't get this open now. Oop. Okay, so just like one drop. That'll make it nice and thick. Gosh, I hope this comes out of my piping bag now. It's really, really thick. Let me grab a piping bag. All right, I got it. I cut a little tiny bit out. Actually, I should probably test it. Oh, yeah, it looks like it'll work. I'm just going to carefully pipe around the edge and that's it. Now it's not going to be deeper, it's just going to come over that little line. I was wondering how I was going to incorporate glitter into this project. And now I know. Here we go. I've got plenty left, so maybe I'll do the turtle um, shell. In this glitter, since I have so much left. Shouldn't hurt to stick it in there. Look at that, almost like I planned it. I'm gonna go with that anyway, since nobody knows. Just take like whatever you're using, cause bubbles tend to form underneath stuff like this. This stick is not gonna be good for that. Um, what can I use? Just kind of little, see I see a bubble right there in the back. And the side. You can kind of see through these translucent molds. Hopefully I'm getting them all. I'm 
All right, now I'm gonna just add a touch more resin just to dome that. I need to get it out of here though. Sorry, it's gonna be out of view for a moment. I'm working on the fly here, guys, I don't know. So now I'm just going to figure out something to do with the turtle body. And uh, I'll be right back. And I'm just going to make the turtle body blue with my alcohol ink and the rest of this resin. I know this is too much resin. So I'm sure I'll make something else with it. It's going to be transparent. Oh, it's getting warm already. This tabletop resin sets up a lot quicker than the casting resin, which is what I wanted for waves, so now I'm dealing with the problems. I just hope I can get this poured out before it's too sticky. I'm messing around too much. It's really light, but I don't think I have time to like. Let me check it on a paper towel. Eh, it's good enough. It's going to have to do. Let me just pour this one in. And squish them around. I hope I... Man, it doesn't hold that much. His head is what I'm more worried about with the bubbles up in here. I didn't mean to pour that much in right away, but he didn't hold that much, so. All right, now I gotta find something to do with the rest of this. Maybe it'll go in my hand mold. You guys are waiting for that to get given away. I will pour the rest in there, I guess. It is ready to pour the next layer, but before that, I have three of the extras done I wanted to show you. So this one, I just took an open bezel, I filled it with some white sparkle dust UV resin, cured that, and then I covered them all with clear UV resin and put the charms in. So those are getting ready to go out the door. And I want to unmold this turtle since I ended up pouring a turtle when I didn't really want to. This is the shell. No bubbles on the edge. That's good. That looks really pretty. Hopefully it'll go with the body. Everything looks better in person. You guys should know that by now. Hopefully this one doesn't have any bubbles. I can't remember the easiest way to get this one out. I think I only made him one other time. I do need to trim him off the bottom here. Oh, look at that, it comes right off. So there's one bubble underneath his foot and another one underneath that foot. I even stuck a little tiny micro brush in there yesterday. There's another bubble underneath that foot. This is a little trinket tray in case you haven't seen it. I'll try to link it if I could find where I got it. There's a little bubble under his chin. This one's, this one's hard. But those can be filled with UV resin if you really want them to be and cured. But this is him, not too bad from the top. It's just a little tiny. Let's see how it should fit. It fit there it goes. There he is. How do you like him? Not too bad. All right, now that that's done, I am going to mix up. So I already have two ounces in here. three if you count the edge. 
it held 23, so that gives me 20 ounces left. But if you watched my beach clock video the other day, the back of something like this has to be opaque so you could see the color transition. So I ended up spray painting the back of the beach clock white so you could see everything. This is kind of the same thing because it's going to be transparent here, light blue and darker blue, but still transparent. So I don't want to pour 20 ounces of resin in here and then have to spray paint the back. So I think I'm going to do 15 or 16 ounces, split that into different colors, let that cure, and then I'm going to do the rest with uh, opaque white resin so it's there forever. It won't be spray painted. That's what I'm going to do. Let me get that ready. I've got 16 ounces of my regular casting resin mixed up and I've picked out two colors. They're both by Let's Resin. One is called Blue and one is called Azure Blue. This one is darker. But before I mix my blues, what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour some clear down here. I don't want a whole lot. So I figured I'll pour my clear and then I'll mix the blues up and kind of split that the way I want. Because I think I want more of the light blue than I do of the dark blue. I don't know. All I know is I'm going to pour some clear at this end for now. I don't want a whole lot of clear. And then when I pour the blues, it should push it back a little bit. That's about all I want there. So I'm just going to pour some... Um, I don't know. I'm just making it up as I go, you guys. I don't have really a definite plan. I still have to work on those pieces that I'm not sure about. So this is the blue color, which that's a lot of resin, so I have to mix it pretty good and then check it on a paper towel to see if it's the color you want because it's going to take quite a bit. really 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 transparent. I'm gonna end up using this whole bottle in here. I hope I have another one. This one first. And this one. And then I'll go back over. could possibly take away my clear down here. I'm not 100% sure. Again, do not torch this mold. It is too thin. Um, yeah. 
I just want them to mix together a little bit. And if you have to add, if you want to add more color, you can just drip it uh, directly into your resin here and then stir it around. I'm just going to kind of monitor it and see what it does. It's taken over my clear for sure. Trying to push the clear up. I mean the blue. All right, I'm just gonna sit and watch it. I'm gonna spray it a few times, keep all these bubbles popped. And if I need to drip more color, if I'll show you how I would do it. So I would drip like the darker blue, grab your stick and blend it if you need to. I even like the streaks actually. Kind of look like the waves. I don't know if you'll see the streaks from behind, but I don't know, I kind of like them. There's not a whole lot of room left for the white, but I hope I left enough space to cover it completely. I don't want to add any more blue here because I'm afraid it's going to come down. Um, what I do want to do is kind of blend this. Not too bad. Might actually add a few more drops. All right, I'll be back when it's cured. So I have a lot of new people all the time. If you're new to resin and you wanna know how I clean my containers right away, just go in my description box and there's a video link down there on how to clean your resin containers. So that'll help you out a lot if you're new. While I wait for that to dry, I think I'm gonna work on the pieces now. The only one I'm worried about is this really tall one because it's kind of leaning to the side. So I don't know if it's going to fall over when I fill it or not, so let's hope not. So I know I said I was probably gonna put sand on this bottom portion, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to alternate the two glitters I chose, which is Atlantic and Sterling. So it's a blue and a silver. And I think like this first set and half of these are going to be all Atlantic with a tiny bit of Sterling. And then I'll alternate for the second set, all sterling with a little bit of Atlantic. Because I think that the sand isn't as classy as um, another glitter next to the glitter, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to start with my Atlantic. I'm going to get a whole bunch in here. And I don't know the easiest way. I can probably... Either pipe it in, but once that starts, unless I thicken it, maybe I'll thicken it with some glue. So once I start piping it, then I can't really set the piping bag down if I have to. It's pretty full of glitter. Plus, um, I don't know, maybe I will thicken it a little bit. I like that little trick. It's just, this one is gonna probably stay suspended. It's a, it's a fine glitter, but I'm just thinking if I can thicken it with the glue, not necessarily to suspend it, although it would definitely help it, but then I can actually pipe it out of the bag a little easier. Let me grab the glue. I use Elmer's Clear. I've been using it a lot lately. I wish he would have uh, came up with this solution. This is Daniel Cooper's invention. 
So I am not taking credit for this. I am just using it all the time. See, it gets really thick. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. You literally need one drop at a time if you've never seen this before. Clear Elmer's glue. I've never tried white, so I can't answer the question if it's gonna tint your resin white. I do not know the answer to that. I think that should be good then. I think I have, I have four drops in here now, and this is four ounces of resin. And I think, I don't know, let me try it with a stick before I get a piping bag out. What I want to do is avoid getting it on the top side, but I want to be able to squish it around on the bottom before I fill it up, you know what I mean? So like squish it into all these crevices to avoid bubbles. See, there's a bubble there. Um, let me put some in a piping bag. I'm just going to put a tiny bit in first and see how it works first with the smallest hole and see if I can control it before I fill the bag up, which it looks like I actually might be able to. Now I'm just gonna fill it up to the, where? That's the question. Right about there. I know you can't see it, but I'm gonna leave the bottom ring open. So I will put some more in this bag because it's not really dripping out that bad out of the bottom. Little at a time. I'll do these. All right, so I'm just gonna stick some in the bottom of each one, and then I'll be fast forwarding for you. Squash it around, because you can see through the side, the bubbles, oh. And then fill it up to where you want it filled. I do have my heat mat down here. Just gonna hang that in there. See that huge bubble? So before you put it down, check them. And then I'm just gonna take this little silicone thing and get it off the section I don't want it on. All right. I will put you on a fast forward for the rest of them.
So as you saw, I know that was really fast, but I piped it in, I squished it around until I didn't see bubbles, filled it up to where I wanted it full. Now you could fill them all away, I'm just choosing not to. And then once I had them all full, sorry, I'm just gonna pop some bubbles while I'm talking. Once I have them all full where I wanted it, I went back through each one, double checked because there were some bubbles that I missed, double checked them, flicked out the bubbles, and then I used my silicone tip and I just cleaned around the edge before it cures too much in the spots I don't want it to cure. And so I'm gonna turn the heat mat on on these. I'm not gonna unmold these with you because I wanna do these ones at the sink where I can have running water getting in there so I'm not breaking off any pieces. I know when I made this set before, they were breaking pretty easily. Again, it, it was a different brand mold, but because the tops are so intricate, some of them were breaking off. So I'm gonna try to avoid that by doing this with soapy water at my kitchen sink. So uh, I'll unmold these with you, but those are no big deal. All right, well, I guess I'll be back in a few hours. I've mixed up an ounce and a half of my Fast Cure this time. This is for the sterling for the tops of these. Now, the only thing I'm a little concerned about are these two horse pieces because there's a big empty spot here at the bottom, but it's on both of them. So I'm not sure if that's how the mold is made. I wasn't gonna pour these two tops, but I'm just gonna pour them and see what happens. If I have to remake them, then I have to remake them because I don't really know if it's supposed to be. It's just weird that both of them are exactly alike for the bubble on the bottom. Okay, so I'm just gonna dump a bunch of my sterling in here. This is my thicker resin. So I don't really need to add any glue to it. I mean, I guess you could if you wanted to, but I don't think it's gonna change anything. I'm just gonna pour it in. I still have the heat mat on, so I'm just gonna leave it on. And then um, I will demold, I will demold them. Like I said, I'll do that outside of view because I wanna do that by the sink. Next day. All right, so we got the pieces unmolded and I'm now realizing you need a complete set of these twice. So now I'm gonna do them again, just the opposite, I think. No, you need four, eight, 12. You need 12 of, I don't know, you have, all I know is I need to do that again. I don't play checkers, so I it, something looked off, but these are the checker pieces. Now these ones ended up with a bubble in most of them, one bubble, and then these came out pretty good, which you can't really see the crown. I'm sure you can go over it with like acrylic paint or something to make that stand out. But these pieces came out really pretty, and the horse did have a bubble underneath, both of them, but honestly, you can't really tell. So I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna sand that little piece down, but they came out really, really nice. And then little ones. So I'm happy with those, but because we needed to use water to get them out, these now have to dry for a while before I pour the next set. Now I'm just gonna pour the next set. You already know the procedure, so I'm not gonna do that. Oh, let me show you the extras I had finished. Two more pendants. And then a pair of earrings. This is the blue I added to the clear. That's why it's a different color blue than the rest of the board. 
All right, so what I did off camera was I poured white and um, I was short like an ounce, but I was using resin for something else, but it was a different resin. So I poured the rest of that one and I turned it white and put it in the center, which is why we have a discoloration here. So I don't know if that's gonna affect the board or not, but we're gonna unmold it and see. Yeah, I was uh, freaking out kind of when I did that. All right, here we go. Oh, one piece of sand that's darker. That looks pretty cool. Really cool, and you can see, oh, I'm so glad I dripped the drops of alcohol ink and then swirled, because that kind of gives it the watery effect. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. What do you guys think? Let's see what it looks like with some pieces on there. I don't know how to play chess. I don't know how to set this up, but I'm thinking like, just looking at piece colors. Some of these got bubbles on the tops. I'm not gonna remake them though. So yeah, I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. And then maybe the silver for the lighter side Anyway, those are those for now. Um, one thing I might do different if I ever did this again, I think I would use a darker sand because the Siesta Key Beach is a white sand and it's very light. But the white lines came out. You can even go back in them if you want them darker. But they came out in the resin um, yeah, I think I might use a, a, like a play sand that you can buy next time because it's such a thin layer of sand, it's a little light for me. But all in all, pretty happy with it. Okay, so I will make the rest of the pieces. The next clip you're going to get is the final product. See you in a bit. So it's been a couple of days. Um, this one is challenging. The molds are not that easy. Now, I did, I made the silver ones, which came out really pretty. I mean, I love them. Uh, the horses actually came out the right way. So their face should have taken up the whole thing. But you can't barely tell on the blue ones. I mean, because I know you could tell, but they're not that bad. Now I did have to make these six pieces all over a second time, only because when I added glue again, I'm thinking that was the problem. These top pieces were not adhered to the bottom, like they never connected. So there was a space between them. So all six of these I had to redo. So I didn't use glue in them the second times, and I guess I didn't need to because all the glitter still stayed exactly where I wanted it. Um, the only problem with these six are there are some bubbles on this outer ridge. So, yeah, there's a few voids in these six pieces. So, I don't know. This one's a little challenging. I made another set each of the little pieces, so you should have enough to play with. Um, so, that's it. I'm going to get you some photos. I'm going to figure out how a board is supposed to be set up. I mean, I'm pretty happy with the board the way it is. Well, then the changes I talked about earlier. Now, I did have a ton of leftover um, resin, so I'll show you some, some extras again. These were all the dark blue. I ran out of pinch bales, so now I'm waiting for a new, <laughs> a new shipment on pinch bales because I've used so many in the past few days. So these are pretty large ones, as you can see in my hand. So I have the dark blue... I have a couple of silvers. I have more than a couple. I have these two that I have put pinch bales on. That I just put a decal on and UV resined over it. This one I kept plain. Then I have a bunch of silver ones over here. I'm grabbing them. Hang on a second. These ones are all waiting for pinch bales. So these I just now unmolded. So yeah, I wasn't sure how much resin to mix up. I even stuck some in my hand mold that's almost filled up. 
So I didn't use all of them. And then I had some clear from something. So I made some more. I tinted it. Oh, this, uh, this must have been from the, uh, these were from the board itself. So I just made some more. So I'm on this like pendant kick. I hope you guys want pendants with your orders for a while. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I did. This is not my favorite mold. I don't know if I will be doing this one again very soon. But I think it came out really pretty. It was worth it in the end. Some challenging pieces, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, stick around for those last pictures. Thanks for coming in. You guys all have a blessed day. See you tomorrow. Bye.